Good evening, everyone. My name is Harry Coghlan. I am the Chief Executive Officer of both the Nassau County Local Economic Assistance Corporation and the Nassau County Industrial Development Agency. On behalf of our chairman, members of the board, and staff, I welcome you to today's open meetings of the board's directors. Today is July 9th, 2020, and the time is now 6.30 p.m. Given the ongoing COVID-19 public health crisis and related executive orders issued by Andrew, Governor Andrew Cuomo, this public meeting is being conducted using telephone conference and video conference. Participants have accessed this public meeting through a Zoom registration or by watching the live stream on our YouTube channel. If you are participating via Zoom, the agency encourages all interested parties to participate and as such has reserved certain points in today's meeting for public comment. If you choose to make a comment, you will do so by selecting the raise hand icon on your device. Once you select the raise hand icon, you will have the opportunity, opportunity to speak when your name is announced. Please note that this is a moderated meeting and at times you may hear us speaking directly to our moderator, Catherine Fee, Chief Marketing Officer and Director of Business Development for the IDA. Please note that this hearing is being both live streamed and recorded. In addition, we have a stenographer present who will be transcribing the meeting so we can add the transcripts of these meetings to the public. Interested parties may also submit written comments which will be included within the public meeting records. Written comments may be sent to my attention, Harry Coglin, Chief Executive Officer at 1 West Street, 4th Floor, Mineola, New York, 11501, or via email at info at NassauIDA.org. Mr. Chairman, I now turn to you to commence the meeting of the Local Economic Assistance Corporation. Thank you, Harry. Uh, before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, I'd like to take a roll call. Um, I, I'll, I'll go through the simply. Um, Richard Kessel, I'm present. Amy Flores? Amy Flores, I am present. Anthony Simon? Present. Tim Williams? Present. John Kamatis? Present. Chris Fusco. Present. Lewis Warren. All right, Lewis will not be attending the meeting tonight. So we do have six out of the seven members uh, and we have a quorum. Um, I ask everyone to rise and uh, uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance um, led by John Kamatis. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice. and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, John. Thank you, members. Um, I'd also ask, as we've been doing, um, for a, a moment of silence uh, for all of those who have passed due to the COVID-19 virus. Unfortunately, many people have passed um, in this country, in this world, and certainly here on Long Island and in New York. And, um, you know, we feel for all of them and their families. And uh, while things are getting better, you know, any death is uh, painful. So I'd ask uh, for a moment of silence for the victims of COVID-19. Thank you, everyone. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I just before we get to our business, uh, just to explain to the public that this is a meeting of the Nassau County uh, Local Economic Assistance Corporation. Um, the uh, leak, as we call it, uh, is not the IDA, it's a sister agency. The board members are the same, the officers are the same. And um, uh, we have a brief agenda for the leak meeting, um, and then we will adjourn the leak meeting, uh, take a quick, maybe minute pause, and then switch over to the IDA. So those who have tuned in expecting the IDA, um, we're coming. So that will happen probably in about 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you. So I wanna to get to the agenda 
of, of leak. And we already did our roll call. Um, there is uh, a consent resolution to amend approving of the SEO family of services. And I'd ask Andrew Kamarami, who is uh, one of our counsel, if he would briefly explain that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the resolution in front of the board today is a consent and amendment resolution. This relates to a previous approval at the May board meeting. Uh, the, uh, the corporation approved uh, up to $15 million of new money and refunding bonds collectively for SEO family of services, a not-for-profit, and a presentation was made to the board. Uh, since that meeting, the corporation received a letter requesting the corporation to add an additional 17 million of taxable bonds. So it's important, not tax exempt, taxable bonds to the financing that relate to uh, the refinancing of a line of credit that in essence would be uh, termed out through the bonds. So the project as previously described does not change except for this refunding component because uh, this is a LIAC project and uh, it involves bond issuance. The tax exempt bonds were subject to a TEFRA hearing under federal law. That hearing uh, was properly noticed and conducted and there is no additional notice or hearing requirements with respect to this amendment. So the amendment entails the approval of an additional $17 million of taxable bonds for the borrower and uh, related mortgage reporting tax exemption. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, are there any questions first on behalf of the board? Okay. Hearing none, um, is, is there anyone in the public who wants to comment on this resolution only? Chairman, there is nobody in the queue. All right, thank you, Catherine. Um, so do I hear a motion to this consent agreement approving uh, and amending the SEO family of services package that we approved previously? I'll make a motion. Anthony Simon made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Amy Flora seconded. All right. Um, I think we could do this voice vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? OK, the motion carries. Now uh, we have the minutes of our May 28th meeting of LEAK. Um, First of all, do I hear a motion to adopt those minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes, Rich. Chris Bosco. Thank you, Chris. Is there a second? Tim Williams. Tim, thank you. Second. Are there any comments about the minutes, changes, additions, or omissions to those minutes? OK, hearing none, we can do a voice vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we've adopted the minutes. We're making progress. Uh, we have several resolutions related to the PPE uh, program that we've done, um, both with uh, uh, the county uh, executive and Hempstead supervisor, Don Clavin, and Amy Flores, too, and Anthony Simon. We had a whole crew over there. Um, and uh, First resolution is ratifying and confirming the agreement made with H&J Medical Supplies and Nassau County Distributors, non pro um, Do uh, Andrew, you want to, or uh, Tom Glasscock want to quickly explain that, why we're doing this again? Sure. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The reason for this resolution, and really the first two resolutions uh, go hand in hand together, um, the, we had, there was prior board resolutions authorizing the purchase of PPE equipment for distribution and authorizing um, the, uh, and there was prior activity authorizing the uh, issuance of an RFQ to select a provider 
Um, this is uh, a provider was selected, it, it being H&J Medical Supplies, Inc. and NASA Candy Distributors, Inc. So two suppliers were selected, both were found to be qualified, and agreements were made with both um, and, and uh, acquisition of equipment uh, for distribution as, as, uh, as shown by the slide was, uh, was, was undertaken. This is to ratify uh, wh while the prior resolution authorized the the chairman, the uh, the, the CEO, and executive director to uh, make an agreement, this is to ratify the agreements that were made and to ratify the activities that were taken with respect to it. The second resolution, uh, if you recall, um, the uh, uh, leak acquired 1,000 PPE kits for distribution. An additional 4,000 kits were acquired in partnership with the town of Hempstead. And the second resolution would authorize really and ratify the partnership with Hempstead for the distribution of, of a collective 5,000 uh, kits of PPE uh, to needed businesses throughout Nassau County. So the first two really are hand in hand together and it's to um, authorize activities and ratify activities that were, were taken already in, in conjunction with prior resolutions by the board. Thank you. I, I note the picture on the screen if we were doing this a year ago, well, people would wonder who those guys are. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we'll do, uh, and I, I think both Harry and I are gonna report on the PPE um, program and where we are, what we've already done. Um, so what, uh, is there, it, first of all, is there a motion to adopt resolution number one, which is ratifying the agreements with H and J and Nassau Candy? I'll make a motion. Anthony Simon makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Amy Flores uh, seconds it. Uh, I just, uh, uh, before we, uh, are there any comments on behalf of the board? Okay, you know, obviously we've approved this in the past. I do just want to disclose, I have no relationship at all with uh, either of the companies, but H&J Medical, was recommended to me by another company that I do some work for. They have no relationship with H and J. I have no relationship. I, frankly, until this, never knew them. Just want to put that on the record. Um, all right. So I think we can do a voice vote. Uh, all those in favor of this resolution, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the second resolution uh, authorizes uh, a program and a partnership with the town of Hempstead. Um, and uh, uh, since we just discussed it, thank you, Tom. Um, is there a, a motion to adopt the program with the town of Hempstead? I'll make a motion to accept the program. Chris Fusco, I'll second it. Are there any comments on this by any of the board members? All right. Are there any comments from the public on either of these resolutions? All right. I I didn't hear from Catherine, so I assume there aren't. So we can. Sorry, right, Chairman. There's no one in the queue. Okay. Thanks, Catherine. So uh, we can do a voice vote on this as well. Um, all those in favor. Of these, uh, uh, of the resolution for the town of Hempstead partnership, uh, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Okay, the resolution carries. Finally, we have a resolution to fund public service announcements. Uh, Tom, you may want to briefly discuss this. Again, this is an issue that we uh, dealt with uh, prior. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you again. Um, as was discussed at prior board meetings, uh, New York State has created a New York Ford loan fund program, and likewise, NASA, um, NASA County has created a Boost NASA loan program, and they're really intended for small businesses, um, for not-for-profits, and for, um, for landlords that provide affordable housing who did not avail themselves and did not receive economic benefits from the PPP program. The public service announcements that this resolution is relevant to is, is really the it leak um, providing public service announcements regarding the opportunities for uh, under the under the Boost NASA loan program and other stimulus opportunities 
to let the residents and businesses and not-for-profits landlords know about these opportunities through public service announcements on the radio, through television, and other, um, and other uh, communication means. And so this would authorize the dedication of the corporate of corporation funds in the amount of um, five thousand. I'm sorry, fifty-two thousand eighty-five dollars to fund those public service announcement efforts. Thank you, um, Tom. I appreciate it. Um, and, and, well, I guess we'll get a motion. Is there a motion uh, to adopt this resolution to fund public service announcements? I'll make a motion. Anthony Simon, uh, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I think that was John Kamatis. Um, I think we could do a voice vote on this as well. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? I, I should have asked, does anyone in the public wish to address this? No, Chairman, not at this time. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, so those three resolutions are adopted. And, and uh, now we have a chief financial uh, officer report. Ann? Are you there, Ann? Ann, you're muted. Okay, now you're unmuted. Okay, good evening, Chairman Kessel and members of the board. If I may direct you to the CFO report, June 2020, in your drop box, uh, we'll get started. If we can go ahead of the revenues section, we had one closing to date. We closed on the Hagedorn project. We anticipate closing on two additional projects in the next two months, one in July and one in August. And then these funds will be used to help us replenish the cash that we use for the PPE program and the loan program. Um, if we go further down to the expenses, you'll see that the year to date in the business development expense of $500,000, that was our expense for the 1,000 PPE kits. We are currently waiting for our reimbursement from the Nassau County Controller um, of $400,000. And we expect to receive that within the next two weeks. Uh, the Office of Community Development and the Controller's Office are working together to expedite our payment for us. So hopefully we'll get it sooner. Um, the cash position at the bottom of the page, you can see that the cash has been depleted, um, which is expected with our purchases of the PPE kits. We have also opened up a non-interest bearing checking account, an escrow account to facilitate the town of Hempstead's PPE purchases of 4,000 kits. Does anyone have any questions on the finance report? Hey, and this is Tim. I don't necessarily have a direct question about this report and I assume there's gonna be another report for the, a separate report for the IDA I yes. guess there's a general comment about, you know, we definitely needed to do the PPE, but obviously looking at the cash position is something I assume you working with Harry are talking to and talking about. Are there any yes. projects relevant just to the leak for now? Uh, yes, we have, closing we have two projects. We were anticipating closing on um, one in July and the other one in August. Okay. And uh, I don't know, do you have a ballpark of what those, what that revenue will look like? Uh, yes, it's about 121,000. Okay. So the, the it looks like we're gonna, after the comptroller's reimbursement, we're still gonna be a negative about 100,000. Oh no, we'll be fine. Because oh, okay. if you look at the cash position now, it's three hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. You add another four hundred to that, and another one hundred and twenty-one. We're we're fine. Okay. No, I'm sorry. It's a little interesting in July, but yeah. Okay. No. And okay. we're not. It's not like we're going to let anything go before we have funds in place. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board for Ann? 
Hearing none, thank you, Ann. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, is there any other business by any board members to uh, be brought before the leak board before we adjourn? Hearing none, uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn the leak board meeting? Make a motion. All right, Amy Flores made a motion. I'll second it. By boys vote, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the leak board meeting is adjourned. I think we need to give staff about a minute or so and we can go into the uh, Industrial Development Agency IDA board meeting. So give us about a minute. Sherman, we're ready when you are. You just wanna wait a few seconds, but we're ready to go. Okay. Everyone ready? Ready. All right, great. So let's do a roll call again. Uh, Richard Kessel, here. Um, Anthony Simon? Here. Tim Williams? Here. Chris Fusco? Here. Amy Flores? Here. John Kamatis? Here. And as I mentioned, Lewis Warren um, is not available this evening. So we do have a quorum of uh, six out of the seven board members. Um, and I thank everyone uh, for participating. And I, I, I got a, a brief report um, and then Harry will give a report. Um, but I do, I do wanna thank uh, the board for participating and being so engaged and involved in all of the IDA and leak activities. You know, these are very difficult times right now. You know, we have a lot of things to tend to, our health, our families, hopefully our work. Um, they're challenging times. And I think that, you know, people don't understand that the board members are unsalaried. They give of their time. And uh, I, I just want to thank all of you uh, for your input and your participation. Uh, I've gotten to know uh, all of you over the couple of years. Um, and I just, uh, and John, John Kamatis and I have said this several times. I think we have a terrific board. I think uh, we, all, we, we all bring our different experiences. Everyone works, puts a lot of effort in. We all get together uh, and we work together. And uh, when you look at some of the other governments, especially down in Washington, that's a rarity. So uh, I just want to thank all of you for all of your time and efforts on behalf of the people of Nassau County. I really appreciate it. And I also want to indicate um, we have a terrific staff. Um, the IDA has turned out and will continue to turn out some extraordinary initiatives um, that haven't been duplicated in many uh, parts of the region and couldn't have been done without the staff. And uh, really, uh, you know, from Harry, um, our councils, both uh, Tom Glasscock in-house um, or of council and Andrew and Tom Gary and uh, all of our staff, um, Colleen, um, Ann, uh, everyone, uh, I just, I can't express my appreciation. Danielle, who always gives me a smile uh, as part of it. We have a terrific, hardworking staff. And um, uh, we, all of the things that we have done and are doing couldn't be done without them. And I, was, I have to say, I was particularly proud um, of the PPE giveaway that uh, occurred a couple of weeks ago at Eisenhower Park. The hard work of the staff um, and uh, the, the, I, I spent a little time there each of the two days. Um, I, I wanna thank the other board members who attended. I know uh, Amy and Anthony, uh, much appreciated. Um, and uh, just it, that came together. You have no idea how many people have come up to me in the last two weeks uh, to commend me for the, not only for what we did in giving the PPE out, but the seamlessness of the distribution. 
Um, it worked like clockwork. And I also have to thank the Nassau County Police Department, um, some of their interns that worked uh, 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 so hard. Uh, I did express my thanks to uh, Commissioner Pat Ryder and also uh, the Office of Emergency Management, the Department of Public Works. This worked like a well-oiled machine. And um, I just think it was a collective and collaborative effort. And I think it's important to note, and I remember first discussing this back a number of months ago in a meeting that we had when, when our office was open about what can we do to help small businesses. And the fact that this came together, and as of today, we've distributed uh, over 900 PPE kits um, in all of the towns and cities um, is an extraordinary thing because for all the things that you can do, um, there was nothing more important or critical to small businesses trying to reopen than to give them these kits. Um, I have to tell you that the idea came to County Executive Laura Curran and myself uh, in a call that we had with all of the Chambers of Commerce. And in fact, the, the president of the Merrick Chamber of Commerce, my good friend Femi Aziz, uh, was one of the people that proposed it and really appreciate that input. It was very clear that uh, many of the small businesses in our county uh, were and are unable to access PPE um, and also to afford to pay for it. And so the IDA, and I again want to thank the board um, by its actions here, helped almost a thousand businesses so far. And believe me when I tell you, I everywhere I go, I have to admit, I uh, was having outdoor dinner at John's restaurant, uh, Sweeney's, and uh, two or three people came over to our table and thanked us, uh, not only for the kits, but for the easy, easy way that they were able to go, line up, receive the kit, um, and, and then exit the park. I mean, it was an extraordinary event. And uh, I will tell you that we, we do a lot of big things, um, but this was one of the biggest things we could do to help small business. And I also, I wanna thank obviously the county executive, Evelyn Simmons and her staff for helping us. But I also wanna thank uh, a Hempstead supervisor, Don Clavin. He's an old friend, I've known him for many years. He stepped up as well. And uh, we formed this partnership and I'm expecting uh, a payment, uh, hopefully tomorrow from the town for an additional $2 million so we can distribute an additional 4,000 kits to small businesses in the town of Hempstead. And um, that's a great thing. And I, I appreciate our partnership and the bipartisan partnership between Laura uh, Curran and Don Clavin. Um, and um, we are, uh, once we get that payment, we have the vendors lined up. Uh, we will work with the town to set up the details we may do it a little bit differently um, in terms of having people come pick it up over a period of time. But, um, you know, this is a huge uh, accomplishment for the small business community. And as many of you have heard from the HRNA report, which Harry will describe further in his report, these small businesses need help desperately. And the PPE program, I am proud to say, was significant and important. Um, I also want to indicate that we have a number of uh, major projects uh, on uh, the calendar tonight and uh, look forward to getting to them a little later on. I do want to report to the board. I did in an email, but I want to say it publicly that we were hopeful that uh, we could move forward uh, in partnership with the city of Long Beach to do the Superblock, a project um, that has been uh, uh, laying fallow for almost four decades. Um, and uh, we have had a number of discussions with both the, the city, the city council president, John Bendo, the city manager, 
um, and the developers, Engel Berman. And uh, on Monday, uh, John Bendo, the city council president, asked if we could postpone a hearing that had been scheduled for Tuesday night with a further one on Wednesday afternoon. I certainly agree to it. We want to work in partnership with the city. We don't want to do something that the city doesn't want us to do. The, uh, I urged both sides in several discussions with both sides over the last few days to sit down and talk and see if they could come to some kind of an agreement. They did meet today. Uh, there are other meetings planned, and I hope and encourage them to come to an agreement that obviously works for the developer and is acceptable to the city of Long Beach. This is a very important project um, and uh, we wanna see it happen. And I know uh, that it will put hundreds of our union friends to work. Uh, I wanna thank Chris and Anthony for working with the unions on this. And I am hoping that I can uh, present this project to the board in the very near future. Um, we will continue to work with the city and the developers on this. Um, I know it's something that is being very watched. It has a long history. I know that Tim, John, and Chris dealt with this a number of years ago. They know some of the complexities. I wanna thank all of them for their advice and their help. And um, I am hopeful that this project will come before us in the near future. So I wanted to report that as well. Um, with that, I will ask our chief executive officer, uh, Harry Coughlin, to issue his report, and then we can move on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. You will find my report in your Dropbox folder two under C, CEO board report. Um, while you look for that, I just want to do a, a staff roll call have with us today. We have our Chief Operating Officer, Danielle Oglesby, Chief Marketing Officer, Catherine Fee, Chief Financial Officer, Ann Lamort. We have our Compliance Assistant, uh, Carleen Winter, our Administrative Director, Colleen Pereira, and our Administrative Assistant, Nicole Gill. Um, and as the, uh, the Chairman mentioned, I would like to thank them all for their efforts. As you will see, there's a lot in this report, um, and it doesn't even speak to the volumes of work and effort put into some of these initiatives. I'd like to start out quickly just on standard agency business operations. On this coming Monday, July 13th, we will return physically to the office at, after the conclusion of these remote meetings. Um, we'll do split alternating staffs to limit our exposure, um, but we will have a full-time office presence as of Monday. We have executed two closings of recent. Uh, we closed the Tuwilliker and Bartone project in Lindbrook uh, at the site of the former Capri Motel, and we closed Hagedorn Little Village School. Uh, we have four projects projected to close in July. Uh, to Member Williams' earlier comment, um, one of those is Kellenberg for Leak, and then we anticipate SCO potentially in August also for Leak. Um, with regards to our desire to continue to upgrade our systems, we've selected a customer relationship management system, Freshworks. You're gonna see a resolution at the end of tonight's agenda to approve that purchase. Um, and we are excited to finally do that. I've included in your, in the same folder of the Dropbox, there is our analysis of all the systems we looked at and why we chose Freshworks, but we're excited. It integrates with existing systems and um, it'll give us a lot of opportunity to really uh, manage and uh, maintain our client list. Um, as the chairman noted, we're spending a great deal of time these days, rightfully so, on COVID recovery efforts. Um, the chairman alluded to the HRNA study. I distributed that earlier today, but it's, it's uh, voluminous. It's a deep study. Uh, there's a lot there to, to take in. Um, there was a press release and, and a press event earlier today, which the chairman attended, uh, where both county executives, County Executive Curran and Malone, released the, uh, the impact of this report. Um, they were announced publicly today. And the key finding of this is that Long Island businesses shed, shed jobs at a faster rate, even compared to New York City and Westchester County. Uh, when all is told and said, the projection is that there is going to be 375 jobs lost due to this crisis. 
uh, with a disproportionate amount in minority communities and lower paying jobs. Um, top industry sectors that were in, impacted the most, hospitality has lost 82,000 jobs, healthcare 59,000. And healthcare is interesting because we are in a COVID crisis, but it was all of the elective surgeries that were canceled. It was the home healthcare aides and others who unfortunately were impacted by this. Retail shed 52,000 jobs and construction 37,000 jobs. Um, it is a detailed study, happy to uh, engage now or later or even after this meeting on any details you'd like to go through, um, but it is critical and the main uh, benefit of this study is when the county executive and the team speak with the state and the federal authorities looking for funding um, to provide services after the fact and replenish uh, some of the budget that is lost as a result of lost property taxes and sales taxes. Uh, I'm happy to say that the Boost the Nassau Loan Program, and one of the things that the HRNA study shows is what types of programs can you do to remediate some of the impact? Um, and one of them is a loan program, which we already have up and off the ground in partnership with the Office of Community Development. Uh, if you recall, earlier resolutions were approved providing for $250,000 from LEAK to fund the program. Um, I can tell you that the response has been significant. Um, there have been, uh, we just executed our first uh, loan to a minority owned construction company in Valley Stream for $30,000. Um, we, we have 33 active applicants now totaling 2 million, but the pipeline has 160 plus Nassau County applications totaling $11 million. So it really shows the need for the businesses for these loans to continue operations. Uh, as the chairman's already said, we also had the second critical initiative, which was the PPE, PPE program. program. Uh, we built a registration portal on the website. There were almost 4,000 registrants. Uh, really highlights the critical need and why it's been so important that we have the partnership that we do not only with the Office of Community Development, but also the town of Hempstead. Um, we call phase one, it was our partnership with the Office of Community Development, where the, we uh, applied for a grant. We were approved for $400,000 in CARES Act funding, and we purchased $500,000 of PPE with $100,000 of our own contribution. Uh, if I ever have seen anything that I would call a true team effort, it was this program. Um, I feel as though in doing so, I'm, I feel like I'm accepting an Academy Award. There were so many people involved. I'm afraid I'm gonna miss somebody. The chairman already said some, but certainly the county, county uh, executive, the Office of Economic Development, Community Development, our outreach offices were critical. The offices of Minority Affairs, Hispanic Affairs, Asian Affairs really pounded the pavement with their constituents, promoted the program, and we really saw the response from that community Office of Communications, uh, OEM, stored our, our kits and then they delivered them to us. Um, obviously, police department uh, arranged all of this, uh, public safety, and uh, we even had the police explorers unit come out on the second day of the giveaway and help us hand out the, the uh, equipment. So um, really great program, very proud of it. And I thank the team for all of their efforts. There were two public service announcements that were approved from LEAK. One of those public service announcements was for business reopenings, and the other one was for the Boost Nassau loan program. Uh, we continue with our social media and web page updates. You're going to see an initiative to promote downtown businesses later in the agenda for Ban Wango. Um, and the next step, once we move past these programs, is the governor issued an executive order allowing IDAs to provide for loans or grant programs per the prior board meeting, we are still set to meet with uh, John Kamatis and other members of the board to design what those programs will look like. So um, I wanna thank the board for your continued support of these initiatives. I wanna thank all of our partners that I've mentioned and beyond, um, and mostly thank the staff for all the good work that they've done to make these successful. Um, if there are any questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Are there any questions on behalf of the board? Okay. Uh, by the way, I should, Harry, just add that those kits uh, uh, are heavy. 
Uh, I actually personally delivered one and I almost broke my back. I mean, they, they, this is not something, you know, a couple of people said, can you put it in the mail to me? You, you, I, you couldn't. The value of the, the, the weight of the kit, I think uh, was around 35 pounds. The value of the kit, if you went out and tried to get it, you know, was somewhere around seven, $800 for each kit to a business. So uh, that's an important point to make. And again, Harry, you and the staff, I thank you all for the great job that you did. Um, what we wanna do now is we wanna temporarily adjourn the meeting to uh, convene uh, a short meeting of the governance committee to discuss a, a particular resolution. So I'll make a motion to adjourn the IDA board meeting. Is there a second? I'll second it. Anthony Simon seconds it. A uh, voice vote, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the governance committee consists of Anthony Simon as our chair, uh, myself, Amy Flores, and Chris Fusco. So um, Anthony, I, I hand it over to you as the chair of the governance committee to take a roll call and to discuss business at hand. Thank you, Chairman Kessel. Uh, at this point, I'd like to make a motion to open the meeting. If I can have a, I'll, I'll open up the meeting and have a first and a second. I'll second the opening of the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, I'm gonna start off with a roll call as well. Anthony Simon. Amy Flores. Chris Fosco. Richard Kessel. Thank you. We're going to move right into the to the approval of the February 27, 2020 Governance Committee minute, meeting minutes. Can I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Richard Kessel. Richie, a second? I'll second it. Amy uh, Florence. Amy. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Uh, we have to vote. Yeah. Yes, can we, have, thank you, Rich. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Okay, we have our second order of business uh, is the uh, governance resolution adopting a policy for providing strategic additional enhanced financial assistance for qualifying residential rental housing projects of the agency. First, let me just, uh, I, I wanna thank the county executive for her leadership in this and the way she has shown her leadership through some amazing difficult times we're all facing. So again, thank you to our county executive, this entire team and this board. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask the committee uh, if Chairman Kessel or the agency uh, CEO, Harry, has any remarks detailing the resolution? Well, Anthony, I'll, I'll start off. Uh... Um, this resolution uh, would set a new policy to encourage uh, increased affordable and diversified housing in the county. Um, uh, the county executive, Laura Curran, uh, and I first had a discussion about this, believe it or not, pre-COVID. And uh, we actually had heard from several uh, current clients of the IDA about the thought uh, about pilots and extensions and the increase in affordable units. And I think that it's been very clear, um, and certainly the county executive expressed that, that uh, the, 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 our county needs to increase the affordable housing stock that we currently have. You know, I think, uh, and I want to commend Newsday for the series that they did that not only dealt with the lack of diversity and inappropriate uh, steering in housing, but also the fact that there's not enough of it, especially on the affordable side. And uh, I, you know, it's clear to me that if this county is gonna survive, that we need to increase the affordable housing stock. Uh, county Executive Curran sent to us a letter, but this is something that we've been under discussion for a number of months. And so 
This resolution, uh, which I would urge the governance committee and then the full board to adopt, would allow us to promote affordable housing by working with either new or existing housing clients um, to be able to help uh, provide them additional benefits in return for increased uh, affordable units or limits and targets um, going forward. And I will tell, uh, tell the board and the governance committee right now that there are several uh, clients out there. Um, one I know of that is already finishing a project and one that is just starting one that would be very interested in, cre in increasing their affordable housing stock uh, if we work with them on it. Um, again, I think that it's the, the job of the IDA um, to promote and encourage affordable housing. Uh, you know, we are in a crisis right now. And one of the advantages of this crisis, uh, if there are any, is that uh, I think uh, many people are going to want to move to our great county. Um, and uh, many uh, uh, companies that are to the west of us are going to be looking at Nassau County. Um, we, we have, as an example, one of our uh, businesses tonight uh, before the board, One Old Country Road. Uh, I've already heard from at least two companies that might be interested in moving in, in there and uh, uh, other companies that might be interested in opening satellite offices out here. And in order to do that, in order to uh, encourage that, we need to be able to uh, provide the affordable housing uh, that people can live in going forward. Um, and uh, I think that uh, this is a great initiative. Uh, again, uh, initially, the, uh, proposed by the county executive and in, in discussions that uh, myself and our staff and several of the board members have had over a number of months, this couldn't be more timely to promote affordable housing. A couple of important points to make. One is that uh, uh, any proposal made by a client to increase their affordable housing stock or change their targets for income levels um, would be subject to a full review and hearing process by the IDA, similar to what we currently do in terms of preliminary inducement approvals, a hearing, and final approval by the board. And I think that's important um, because we want to make sure that this is done properly and that there is input from the public. Um, Secondly, and I think it's important, we've, uh, as part of this resolution, we've established a number of criteria uh, to qualify uh, for uh, entities to come in and uh, propose uh, a, an affordable housing program on their own. And so, uh, and I won't go through all those criteria, they're outlined in the resolution. And um, uh, needless to say that I think that this is something that the board can do uh, to, again, help us try and recover from uh, this economic uh, disaster that we have been facing, providing more affordable housing, particularly uh, with some companies and, and developers that already have the housing or finishing the housing or building the housing. This is not something that is five years away. This is something that can happen in a matter of months. And uh, I, I, we have uh, discussed this with our attorneys. I want to thank uh, uh, Harry for his leadership on this. And certainly Tom Glasscock, Tom Gary, and Andrew Kamarami. Um, we believe it's totally legal and within our function to be able to do it. And uh, the process tonight would be for the governance committee um, to uh, approve this, and then it would go immediately to the board for a board vote. Before I finish, I'd like to introduce Evelyn Simis, um, a good friend and a great partner with us um, on behalf representing the county executive. Evelyn? Thank you, Chairman Kessel. Um, whoops, I have to unmute. 
No, you're good. I'm good? Okay, there we go. Thank you, Chairman Kessel, and good evening, board members. I truly appreciate um, the partnership we've had on so many issues, as uh, as the chairman has said, and Harry in his report, whether it's the PPE and the, or the loans and the activities we've done, even today's study, um, which provided such useful information um, for our efforts and the advocacy, advocacy we're trying to do in Washington to get some assistance for the county, which is so critical. But um, you know, this this partnership that we have will continue now in a new form with this policy. Um, so for the purposes of the record, since I know the, the members have received the letter from the county executive, I will read it. Um, but I do think it's important to um, have the public be aware of the importance of this policy to the county executive. So the letter is uh, dated July 1, 2020 to Chairman Kessel and Nassau County IDA. Dear Chairman Kessel, as you know, providing greater housing opportunities for Nassau's residents has been a high priority of my administration since day one. We have worked together to promote greater options, including mixed income, rental, and transit-oriented development in order to attract the workforce we need, enhance the county's appeal to growing families, and to offer our seniors the options to age in place. We have had a number of successes working collaboratively with municipal officials, nonprofit partners, and developers, and with labor. I write at this time to ask the IDA board to take the next important step in this mutual effort by adopting a policy specifically designed to increase affordability in rental housing for those projects seeking a pilot from the IDA. I have spoken to many developers and housing experts and understand the challenges of building in our high cost county. A long-term pilot agreement, which provides developers certainty in a critical component of project financing is one of the most useful tools we have available for incentivizing the creation of these housing units. To this end, I ask the IDA to consider granting special consideration in the awarding of financial assistance for projects where the developer agrees to include additional affordable units and or lowers the income eligibility threshold for existing or contemplating affordable units. I would urge that your policy specifically reference the inclusion of federal home funds managed by Nassau County's Office of Community Development, as well as the creation of additional units in high opportunity areas of the county. Additionally, I've asked my Deputy for Economic Development, Evelyn Simmis, to collaborate with IDA CEO, Harry Coglin on several action items to promote affordable housing, including the scheduling of a developer's information forum, more formalized coordination and early engagement with OCD on proposed housing projects and enhancements to the county and IDA websites to spread the word about our available programs, financing and incentives. As we look to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, private sector investment in housing will be more important than ever. I greatly appreciate your consideration and continued partnership in improving NASA's prospects for the future. Sincerely, Laura Curran. So again, I thank you all. Look forward to working with um, uh, Harry on the, and the team on this next chapter of our working even more closely together to get uh, these opportunities available to uh, developers to make sure they add, add units. Um, we're looking really forward to working on this with you. Appreciate your consideration this evening. Thank you, uh, Evelyn. Before I turn it back to Anthony, um, uh, first of all, someone, uh, we all need to mute until we speak because we're getting some background noise on, please. Um, the other uh, is, uh, I, I'd just like to ask Harry Coughlin if he'd like to say a few words about this and then turn it back to Anthony. Chairman, I think it's been very well covered by yourself and the deputy county executive. So at that point, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, Anthony, it's all yours. Thank you, Chairman Kessel. At this time, I'll ask the, uh, any of the committee members if they have any questions or comments regarding the policy. Hearing none, I request a motion to approve the resolution. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you. I'll ask now if there's any committee member who has any other business to bring before the governance committee. Seeing none, I request a motion now to close the meeting. I make a motion to close the governance committee meeting. I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. The meeting is, uh, the governance committee is adjourned. Thank you, uh, Anthony. Uh, I'll make a motion to reopen the IDA board meeting. Is there a second? I'll second it. Who is that? Anthony. Chris? Oh, Anthony. Okay, thanks, Anthony. Um, all those in favor of reopening the IDA meeting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, Anthony, do you have a recommendation for us uh, from the governance committee? Yes, Chairman Kessel. As chairman of the uh, governance committee, I would like to inform the board of the agency that the committee has reviewed and unanimously approved the committee a, and in committee a resolution adopting a policy for providing strategic additional enhanced financial assistance for qualifying residential rent, rental housing projects of the agency. As the proposed policy was presented with our other board members present, I would like to ask all the board members if they have any questions or comments regarding this policy. Hearing none, Chairman Kessel, I'll turn it back over to you for a vote. Okay, so uh, do I hear a motion uh, to adopt this policy? I'll make the motion to adopt the policy. Anthony, you made the motion, and Chris, was that you, Chris, who seconded it? That's me. I'll second it. Okay. Um, are, are there any questions or comments by any board members on this policy? Hearing none, uh, is there anyone from the public who would like to address this policy? No, Chairman, not at this time. All right, Catherine. I just want to thank the board and I, again, the staff uh, for all of their hard work. This is groundbreaking for the IDA. Uh, I would venture to guess it's one of the first uh, of its kind anywhere. And I look forward to working with the board and I'm hopeful within the next couple of months that we see our first applications on this. So uh, I, I thank you all for that. Uh, I will take a roll call vote. Uh, I'm sorry, Rich, it's Tim. Oh. Just, I wanted to just say for follow up my email, we're going to bring this back to include anti-discriminatory language at a later date. Yes. Okay. I think it's an excellent idea. I discussed it with uh, Andrew Kamarmi today, and I'd like you to work with Andrew on some uh, additional language on anti-discrimination. And I'd like, if you can do that with Andrew, we could bring it uh, forward at the next board meeting. I think it's an excellent idea. Sure. Okay, um, any other comments? Okay, uh, I'll call a roll vote. Richard Kessel, I vote aye. Anthony Simon? Aye. Tim Williams? Aye. Amy Flores? Aye. Chris Fusco? Aye. John Kamatis. Aye. Okay, so we've, uh, this resolution passes and uh, look forward to working with everyone on it. And Tim, uh, if you would work with Andrew on that language, I think it's something we'd like to take up at our, uh, at our next board meeting. Thank you. Um, we've, got an, uh, we've got a number of, was that someone? No. Uh, we have a number of consent items. We'll do them uh, quickly. I, I do want to point out this is an extraordinarily long uh, a number of consent resolutions. And, uh, you know, in talking about this with Andrew, um, uh, you know, there are always different reasons for consents. And I think a lot of these consents are looking for extensions um, on closings or sales tax use. And some of it is related to COVID-19 not just on the development side, but also on the government side. You know, as an example, um, a couple of these companies have contacted me uh, to try to help them with local governments and getting the permitting done. And of course, part of the problem is that with local governments, uh, a number of their building departments, as an example, have not been open 
or have been very understaffed, uh, understandably so. And while not all of these consent resolutions are because of that, a number of them are. And uh, I, 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 again, normally we don't bring this number of uh, consent resolutions to the board at one meeting, but I did want everyone to understand one of the reasons uh, why we have to do this at this point. Obviously, the, all of these projects are important to us um, and uh, we uh, will be glad to work with the developers uh, 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 with the local towns uh, or villages or cities to help get all the permitting done so these projects uh, are, can be on their way to being constructed if that's what the case is on the extension. Um, we'd like to close as many of these as quickly as possible. And while we certainly understand and empathize with the COVID-19 impact on a number of these projects, um, we want to try to get them moving and get them done. So uh, I, I beg your indulgence for all of these uh, extensions. I'll try to go through these quickly. First, we've got the extension to close on North Shore Millbrook. Um, Andrew? Yes, and Mr. Chairman, uh, I suggest that, uh, you know, we can, uh, if, 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 if you would, these, some of these can be taken up in a group and voted for it at the same time, uh, unless there are specific questions as to any one of them. Good. So the first four uh, relate to extensions to close. These are all applicant requests that staff has uh, vetted and recommends to the board different time periods of extension to close, depending on the actual uh, reason for the request from the applicant. And none of these extensions extend beyond the calendar year. Some are much shorter, some are longer. Some of these requests have technical uh, reasons. Some uh, are related to COVID and each resolution states uh, the... and funding group, SLC development and CKHP 1980. resolutions to uh, resolutions uh, permitting an extension. Is anybody else losing Andrew? Or is yeah, it Andrew, we're, we're having problems uh, uh, with you. So we need you to uh, kind of go through that again. Sorry. I apologize. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I. I switched to Wi-Fi to, to sell, hopefully this will be fine. Um, so uh, again, the resolutions that would be taken up as a group uh, relate to the extension of time to close the straight lease transaction. These are previously approved projects and the extension is for different time periods as stated in the resolutions and as recommended by staff to the board. And these are North Shore Millbrook, Euro-American, SLC Development, and CKHP 1985, Mark 7 LLC. All right, uh, thank you, Andrew. Are there any questions from the board on just those four? Okay, uh, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent resolutions for uh, to close on North Shore Millbrook, Euro American funding, SLC development, and CKHB 1985 Marcus Avenue LLC. I make the motion, Tim Williams. All right, Tim, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it, Chris Cusco. Chris Cusco second. Um, does anyone in the public wish to comment? on these uh, consent resolutions? No, Chairman, not at this time. Okay, uh, any further questions or comments on the part of the board? Hearing none, I think we can voice vote. All those in favor of these four extensions indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Any abstentions? Okay, so those four consents are done. Mr. Now Chairman, we've got, uh, yes. I just, I just like you to be aware for the record that member Simon dropped off prior to the vote. Okay. He was Thank absent you. for the vote. Thank you. Um, we now have the extension for CSH Plainview. So, uh, and, Mr. Chairman, here we have uh, two resolutions that, if the board so desires, can be taken up in a single vote as they relate to similar actions. Uh, one is CSH Plainview LLC, and the other one is NASA Steel. And both of these relate and uh, to the extension of uh, the um, sales tax exemption granted on these projects and the completion date. These are relatively recent projects, uh, each of, uh, in each of which the applicant requested an extension to complete the project. And this is basically uh, the uh, renovation and equipping of the project. Okay, uh, thank you. Andrew, are there any questions on CSH or Nassau Steel from any board members? All right, seeing none, um, it, it, is there anyone from the public that w wishes to address these two? No, Chairman, not at this time. Thank you, Catherine. All right, do I hear a motion to adopt resolution approving the e extension for CSH and the sales tax consent for Nassau Steel? Tim Williams. Okay, Tim Williams made the motion. I'll second it. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any extension? Abs abstentions? Okay, so we've got that. Now we've got uh, three others. We've got a consent resolution for our friends at Sebrioli Foods. Great raviolis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Mr. Chairman, this one, so the last three, I think we'll have to take one by one. Okay. Uh, uh, Sebrioli Foods uh, relates to an amendment of the existing documents. Uh, Sebrioli had a meeting with the agency at now several months ago uh, with staff uh, and they explained that at the time when this transaction closed, there was a Scribner's error, not just in the, our documents, but basically stemming from a mistake in their application as a result of which their uh, committed employment number was overstated. And they requested uh, the agency to amend the documents to correct this number. It is important to note that at no time were they in default. Uh, the, uh, the, the, basically the employment number uh, that uh, they, they committed to, they have met at all times but the base employment number that was originally stated in the documents was overstated and uh, the resolution relates to a correction of the documents. Okay, Andrew, are there any questions on Sebrioli Foods? No, I'm sorry. So what do we actually, what, what's, the, what's the consent for today? So the, the consent is basically a reduction uh, uh, to the actual number that uh, they agreed to originally, which is 223, even though they are well above that. And today they have 240, but uh, there was a misstatement uh, instead of 223, a higher number was stated. So it is basically correcting what the actual uh, amount should have been. Member Williams, they, effectively they counted too many people at the beginning. And so they said their number was higher than it really was as far as base employment. The increase from that time, they've met the requirements. They just started at a higher number than what was intended, higher than they, they actually had. But they've met the increased employment, requir increased employment requirements from the, um, from the project date. So more of an academic uh, than a concern. Obviously, they're above, they're above and beyond the number, which is great. I don't really see a big problem there. But use at some point 
in order to do this? Don't we need Kamoin to go back and? We, we actually, yes, we did. So we consulted with Kamoin Associates and asked them to rerun uh, their numbers as a result of the change. And they indicated by email that, you know, in order to save money for the agency and the applicant, they ran the numbers and the reduction is so insignificant that it does not result in any change in their report. So they recommended not to have to issue an actual report as a result. Okay. Uh, I assume then that email suffices as, you know, independent advice. I, I, I certainly believe it does. And again, uh, it, 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 it does not change their analysis and ultimately, uh, everyone, uh, uh, you know, stated that that this this was this was a Scribner's error that is getting corrected. Right. My question is: their original their original report, obviously based on the Scribner's error, they're above and beyond the number. But at the end of the day, we are where our policy is to use an economic report, and I agree with them to if it's if it's insignificant, not to pay them for a report. The question is, does their email that they said that in suffice to meet the proper standard that we've done the right economics on the right number? Uh, if, if you're asking me, uh, I, 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 the answer is yes. Okay. From a legal standpoint, it should certainly be fine. Okay. Are there any other questions about uh, Sevrioli uh, and the consent resolution before us? All right, hearing none, is there anyone from the public that wishes to comment? No, Chairman, not at this time. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion to adopt Sevrioli Foods consent resolution? Tim Williams. Tim Williams makes the motion. I'll second it. Uh, I think we can do a voice vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion carries. Now we have consent on 839 Management LLC. Andrew? Yes, yeah, so 839 Management LLC is a joint uh, request by uh, 839 Management LLC, as well as the North Hempstead, Town of North Hempstead Housing Authority. This is a request to permit the transfer of this property by the current owner to the housing authority. Uh, this is a uh, straight lease transaction that has been in place for two years and uh, the housing authority desires to take it over and turn uh, all of the units into fully affordable. So uh, the joint request is for the agency to permit the termination of this project without a recapture after the second year of the project and uh, allowing a transfer to the North Hempstead Housing Authority so that they could uh, continue uh, what was the initial mission of the project, but in fact, making all of the units affordable. Thank you, Andrew. Are there any questions on behalf of the board on 839 management? All right, seeing none. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to address this? No, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. Do I hear a motion to approve consent resolution on 839 management? Tim Williams. Tim Williams moves. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, John Kamada seconds. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that resolution passes. We have one more consent resolution uh, for Intralogic Solutions. Andrew? So Intralogic Solutions is an existing client of the agency. It is a transaction that uh, closed uh, back in 2013. And uh, they, interestingly, even though a long time has passed, they have not been able to take advantage of the sales tax exemption that was granted to them. The reason uh, for that relates to uh, 
a construction dispute and I believe litigation that has been now uh, concluded and they're ready to move forward with that portion of the project that would require use of their sales tax exemption. Because the exemption expired, this consent essentially rewards the sales tax exemption that they previously received but did not use. And uh, the amount of that exemption is 84,000 uh, and uh, let me just give you the, the exact amount. It is 84,000. Uh, uh, $93.75. Thank you very much. Uh, so it is under $100,000. So it does not require a public hearing, even if it is deemed new financial assistance. But again, it is assistance that was previously awarded and not used by the applicant. Okay, are there any questions on behalf of the board regarding Intralogic Solutions? All right, seeing none, is there anyone in the public that wishes to address this? No, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. Do I hear a motion to uh, adopt and approve the consent resolution for Intralogic Solutions? Tim Williams. Oh. Tim Williams. Thank you. Um, Second. Is there a second? Amy Flores, seconds. Amy Flores, thank you, Amy. All those in favor by voice vote, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. Um, we, uh, so we're done with the consent resolutions. I know we never thought we'd get there, but we did. So we, just for the public, we now have a preliminary resolution for LL, uh, LJ Services, London Jewelers, very exciting. Um, and uh, for the public, th there will be a presentation from London Jewelers. We've already uh, uh, met with them and discussed this project. Uh, just uh, for the public, uh, if anyone is watching or uh, interested, we will then do three final approvals. Um, DBD Realty, which is one old country road, followed by uh, LEG Acquisitions, which is Home Depot, followed by 26 Sunset, which is the hotel at the Miller Gin. So after we have this uh, presentation uh, about LJ Services, London Jewelers, we will then move on to, uh, to those projects. And with that, I'd like to call on the representatives from London Jewelers uh, to make a presentation to the board. Thank okay. you. Uh, good evening, Chairman. Uh, my name is Dan Deegan with the law firm Porcelli Deegan Toronto for the applicant. Um, I don't see on my screen, but with us today should be Mark Udell uh, from London Jewelers. Mark, are you there? Can you hear me? I'm here. Okay. Okay. Are you with you're with Tim Timothy Clare? Yes, I'm here as well. And Scott Alper. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. So Mark Udell, Scott. Scott Alper and Tim Clare are from London Jewelers, um, which the name of the applicant is LJ Services, LTD, and their affiliated real estate entity. Uh, the project is the um, acquisition of a property known as 119 Glen Cove Drive in Glen Head, New York. Um, many people on this, um, I'm sure most of you have heard of London Jewelers. London Jewelers itself is a, a chain of um, very uh, reputable jewelers. Um, they have nine retail store locations um, located on Long Island, New York City, and New Jersey. Um, they have a very big presence at the Americana. Um, that's the well-known public face of London Jewelers. The applicant before you today is not London Jewelers proper, the retail operation, but rather the corporate headquarters operation, which services those retail from an office building. They're currently located, the, that headquarters business, which is LJ Services, the applicant here, is currently um, spread out between Wi-Fi. spread out between three different locations um, in Glen Cove, um, some of which have expiring leases, and otherwise it's un inefficient. Um, the plan would be to consolidate those operations 
and put them into this building um, in Glen Head, which you saw a picture of at the beginning, which needs some work. Um, it would be to acquire the property for $1.6 million and put approximately a million dollars into the pro into the building in order to upgrade it and make it suitable for corporate headquarters. Um, there's 45 existing jobs um, at the, the spread out between the three locations now. Those would be consolidated into the new building. And over the next three years, we'll be able to add approximately seven new employees to the corporate headquarters for a total of about uh, 50, 52 employees. Um, and these are um, not the, you know, in addition to that, and while it's not technically the applicant here and this IDA is not um, you know, authorized to do retail projects, it is worth knowing uh, noting the economic impact of London Jewelers, um, you know, which this business services on the Long Island economy. Those other locations all employ, um, you know, many people. They um, provide a great service. They are good um, tenants in other places. So they have a very tremendous um, economic impact on the county in general. The applicant before you now is the corporate entity that that, that services those to keep them um, in in business. You know, back office, operational, um, accounting, human resources, those type of operations are what would be done at this consolidated headquarters. The uh, property itself is about an acre worth of property. Um, it's 14,000 square foot vacant building. Uh, the building is actually subject to a current Nassau County IDA project and pilot agreement uh, as part of a um, basically a portfolio of buildings that were um, entered into a IDA transaction a number of years ago. Uh, the, the proposal here would be to um, have that existing IDA pilot terminate and then have it be replaced with a new IDA transaction directly with the applicant in this case. Um, the applicant, um, LJ Services and its real estate entity affiliate are currently in contract to buy the property. That contract is subject to and conditioned upon the IDA's approval. Um, this is a big undertaking for the uh, organization and uh, it really is not possible without the IDA's assistance. Uh, what we're looking to do and we're asking for the IDA is a sales tax um, exemption on the um, materials that have to go into the new headquarters, a mortgage recording tax exemption on the acquisition uh, mortgage, and, um, and then finally a stabilization pilot that would let us um, key into the current level of taxes now and have them stabilized for a long period of time in order to allow us the stability to um, you know, move these jobs, consolidate them, and then ultimately increase the job count. As I say, this is a bigger economic story than just the headquarters because of you know, it's the affiliated entities, which are not the subject of this application, but certainly provide have a very large economic impact and footprint on Long Island and other areas as well. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I, you know, as I say, we have um, Mark Udell and Scott Alper who are principals, and then we have um, Timothy Clare, who is the um, CEO or uh, the president, and um, we're available for any questions that the board might have. Thank you, uh, Dan, and thank you for uh, uh, the uh, London Jewelers uh, executives attending this today. Um, just want to indicate we did meet with them. Um, you know, obviously they're a hallmark company in Nassau County, kind of a smaller version of 1-800-Flowers and uh, very proud uh, to have the county uh, being the home for the corporate headquarters for a world known company like London Jewelers. Um, now, are there, uh, are there any uh, questions from any of the board members? Okay. I think, uh, so, just to clarify, I think you said it. They'll, there's going to be no retail at, at the location. This is all office space, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Corporate headquarters. Thank you. Um, it, it, is there anyone from the public uh, who would want to address this preliminary uh, inducement? No, Chairman, not at this time. Okay, so just for the public's sake, uh, we would be voting on uh, this for a preliminary approval. Um, that uh, then there will follow staff negotiations and discussions with the applicant. 
Uh, there will be in the future a public hearing where anyone can comment uh, further. And then this would come back to the board for a final approval in the future. So um, without any further discussion or comments, I'd ask for a motion to approve the preliminary inducement resolution for LJ Services, London Jewelers. Tim Williams. Tim Williams moves the resolution. Is there a second? I'll second it, Chris Fusco. Chris Fusco seconds it. Um, I guess we'll do a roll call vote. Richard Kessel, I vote aye. Amy Flores? Amy Flores, I vote aye. Tim Williams? Yes. Chris Fusco? Aye. John Kamatis? John? All right, but yeah. I still, we still have four votes, so it passes. Thank you, Dan. Thank you to the applicants. We look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Thank you. All right, um, is everyone okay? Can we continue? I know it's a little warm and it's a hot night. I'm taking my jacket off, so <laughs> nothing else though. Mr. Chairman, if I could just confirm, a member of Commodus, it looked like you were trying to. Um, I'm an aye. Yes, so you, you voted in favor of that motion as well. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. And I, I assume no. that Anthony Simon is not back, correct? Okay. So we now have uh, the approval resolution for DBD Realty Group, uh, One Old Country Road. And uh, Dan Deegan, I'd ask you to make a brief presentation for the public, uh, uh, just uh, as information. Uh, this was already uh, before us and a full presentation was made uh, to the board at a, at a prior meeting. And as well, uh, we did hold a public hearing on this as well. So Dan. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Kessel and members of the board. And for the record, my name is Dan Deegan with the law firm Forcelli Deegan Tirana in Uniondale, New York for the applicant. I also have with me today on the Zoom call, uh, Dr. David Abiri and Deborah Abiri. Are you guys there? Yes, we're here. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, you know, this board is familiar with this project um, and this building. You know, this building has had a history of um, a lot of problems over the last several decades. It's um, slated with 1-800 moving out, probably to be about 65% vacant, needs a major influx of capital. Um, we're proposing to put $13 million into the property um, just as the initial base building work. Uh, there would be additional work for sure as tenants get identified to come in uh, as tenant building takes place. But this project before the IDA is the investment into the building. Um, it's a 300,000 square foot building with 150,000 square foot um, you know, garage uh, facility, which has been dilapidated. This building's been through cycles of bankruptcy, uh, you know, foreclosures, not bankruptcies, but foreclosures, receiverships, and a revolving ownership. Uh, DBD Realty is um, stepped up to the plate here and is willing to make this type of investment if they can have a partnership with the IDA in order to help stabilize the taxes and have predictability going forward and also looking for sales tax exemption on the construction materials and mortgage recording tax on to the extent that we're financing the improvements. Um, it's worth noting that since our last meeting, we have reached out to the Nassau Suffolk building trades and we've had several conversations with Matt Arasech. Um, we've actually, the, the very first contract that's being, uh, it's about to be started is the HVAC and we ran the contractor. We had a choice of three contractors. We selected the union trade contractor and uh, Matt Arasich, um, you know, after clearing it with him to make sure that they were good. Um, so that went very well. Um, we've also been uh, had conversations with Paul Leo from the Carpenters about um, seeing, he, he was basically asking how he, he could get involved and, you know, if as and when the work um, comes up for the Carpenters, we certainly are gonna make sure that we include his uh, contractors in the, um, you know, opportunity to be competitive and get involved in this project. So. You know, hopefully you, with the IDA's assistance, you're gonna see a, a transformation of this building. Um, it was once the most, one of the most, if not the most prominent buildings in Nassau County when it was built. 
from business perspective, and it is, um, you know, sorely needs a major facelift. And uh, with the IDA's help, we can make that become a reality. Thank you, uh, Dan. Uh, Andrew, do you want to give a description of the package here? Absolutely. Uh, in front of the board are three resolutions, a secret resolution, a pilot deviation resolution, and an approving resolution. The pilot uh, being approved is a 20-year pilot that starts out uh, with uh, current taxes fixed in the initial six years, uh, increased by 1.81%, which is the inflation, starting with year seven all the way through the end, compounded. And the additional financial assistance being provided is mortgage recording tax up to an amount of $97,500 and sales and use tax exemption up to the amount of $672,750. Thank you, uh, Andrew and Dan. Uh, are there any questions from any of the board members? Yeah, so we, we don't, you, there are no current, you said it'll be about 60% empty once 1-800 uh, leaves? Yes, so the history with this building is that all of the tenants that are there are month-to-month -month tenants or very short-term lease tenants. And they all have been very you know, unsettled and, and nervous for a long time about the, the future of this building. So uh, you know, in, in addition to the fact that we've got this large vacancy, the ones that even the tenants that are there are shaky and you know, need to see this influx of capital in order to stay there. And um, you know, that's why we're asking the IDA's help here to try and turn this building around. I, I do want to add one point for the benefit of the board that during uh, the negotiation process between the applicant and the agency staff, a, a commitment was made to create and retain at all times 300 full-time equivalent jobs following the project's completion. What what's the current? Out of just curiosity, because uh, I don't know what the square footage relevant to employment is. How many employees work in the building today? Of all the corporations that are there, including one eight hundred. Well, there's a lot of small businesses. Um, I, yeah. I don't know, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask Deborah or Doctor Beer if they have an idea. I don't know that we really have a count because uh, it, we have not been engaged with the individual businesses like we will be in the future under the IDA documents in terms of requiring them to report. But certainly the capacity of the building, you know, given the square foot is 300,000 square feet, is much larger than even the 300 that we're committing to. We're just committing to 300 because we can't control it. It's ultimately the employees, uh, the, you know, the tenants who are hiring these people. Um, but the potential here certainly is uh, very large. Uh, so I, I continue, you know, to struggle with these types of transactions where we're committing you know benefits but with no commitment and and in this environment where i do anticipate there there's going to be an in i think everybody anticipates it uh, including the report if i read it correctly that we just got there is going to be a wealth of transition of office space throughout the state throughout the country and definitely throughout our county my concern is whether we are going to get into the habit of giving every single building that has a large empty office space benefits in an effort to help them attract uh, tenants. If that's the case, we're gonna have an inflow and the benefits packages are gonna be on hundreds of office space in Nassau County. And, uh, I mean, all, there are tons of, uh, you know, un absolutely unrelated to this project. And I don't want anybody to assume I'm associating what I'm about to say to this project. There are tons of CMBS transactions that are being moved in the special servicing already because of the fear of empty office space. And so the question, because we need to ask ourselves unrelated to this project, and I really, it, it's being brought up because of this project, but unrelated. Are we ready to start this process where someone comes to us solely because they have law, they've lost a large tenant, but they don't have a commitment for a replacement tenant, and we're going to give them benefits and hopes 
of getting one. We did that with the um, that warehouse in Hicksville. I don't even know. I don't think they're even. They still don't have a tenant. Well, that's not true. A tenant. Oh, I, I, have, haven't they, of, I haven't heard. I haven't heard an update. Have, I have spoken to uh, the uh, Art and uh, Sanders and um, Jordan Sanders, and they are going to be fully uh, occupied. That's fantastic. Unfortunately, you know, two years later, and I, I would hope that would happen on every single building. But the, the question becomes for the for the two years that did, did the, uh, you know, community that the taxpayers get their equal benefits from the benefits that that building received during the same period. So my question is, is it great that's going to be a 300 commitment of employees i don't know how that's relevant to the number of employees today but are we ready to start this in this environment giving benefits simply because buildings lose large tenants and 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 granted the it's not simply because the, this building needs help it needs assistance it's got a history i think all the buildings that come before us are going to claim to have a history and to be some level of I iconic. So are we ready to start doing this? All right, that's really a question for the board, not the applicant. I was, I was gonna say, I mean, I mean, Tim, I would argue in, in this um, you know, situation, you know, I, I think it is a case by case basis. And I do think that this building, you know, we've all seen a lot of different projects. This does have a kind of a compelling angle to it in that uh, it's so large and so prominent and so empty, you know, and um, really needs, and, and, and it's had this history and it's really been the prior owners that have um, bit off more than they could chew and, and, and not really ever made the investments that were necessary to turn this building around. Um, you know, this applicant's pretty willing and to, able to do that. And we're not looking for a reduction in the taxes. We're looking for a, um, you know, a stabilization going forward. You know, it, it, I, I, and I don't, I, again, Dan, I, I don't argue the, the importance of the building, the, potential for the building. I argue the potential of uh, that the IDA is going to set, set a standard for doing this. And I think that's where I'm concerned that by doing this and doing it, I was, I reluctantly voted against that one in, uh, in Hicksville. I'm happy and I'm thrilled that multiple years later, they have tenants and they're going to be fully occupied as I'm sure this will be the same exact uh, for this building. Luckily, in this case, you have committed new owners that are willing to put tremendous amount of dollars behind faith that they're going to be able to do it and they're going to be able to attract tenants. And I think that's huge. The issue the idea for, would be incentivizing that. The idea is incentivizing right. them to do that. I the issue for us is the cart and the horse, right? Yeah. And I know we did it. We did something similar on a very specific base out in uh, Beth Page. Uh, but I think that was uh, an extremely unique scenario. Um, and I guess the question becomes, is this, are we ready for this? And, and Richie, you know, the, the floodgates could open up considering where the economy and where the market is today. And we have to be mindful of that when we do this, do this. Yeah, I mean, Tim, from my perspective, I think we have to look at each project separately. Um, uh, this, as I look at this project, um, you know, One Old Country Road is the gateway to the county seat in Mineola. It's one of the first office buildings of its size built in the county. Uh, it has been uh, a disaster under prior ownership for years. The, gar the garage had to be closed at one point. And, um, and so I, I look at this as um, a way uh, to improve a building that's already there. That's an essential part of the county. And also, um, uh, hopefully, to attract some additional tenants. But I do, I do think we just have to be you know, cautious in, in looking at these kinds of projects. And it's important to point out that on the Hicksville project, and, you know, I appreciate your, your comments about it, 
uh, that project uh, it has isn't even finished yet. I mean, it's it would have been finished if it weren't for COVID. I have talked to the developers several times, um, and so that is a, a real success story. And from my perspective, I think this will be a success story. But I do agree with you that we have to take these singly, one at a time, and be very careful about what do what we're doing out there. Well, I, I, listen. I think this. I think the staff and and Dan and everybody does a good job of doing the one at a time. I, I, I don't. I agree with you a hundred percent. I think everything comes in and gets independently evaluated. And, and I again, I stress that I'm not trying to associate that Hicksville project to this project. They are individuals. They do need to be evaluated based on their own merits. And one has nothing to do with the other. The only the only uh, reason I brought it up was the fact that we gave benefits to an organization or or a or an asset that had no commitment and it sat that way for several years. And I don't think that's a return to the uh, I don't think that's an equal return to the residents during the same period of time whose taxpayer money we're giving benefits from. Uh, uh, Tim, in, in yeah. fairness, because I'm familiar with that project, as you know, they, it, it's still under construction. So they, they have, the benefits, you know, it really caught up to, um, you know, there was never, never building hasn't even come online yet. So it hasn't been like it's sitting around. It's been under construction. And it just so happens they did get tenants prior to the completion of construction. So with the benefit of hindsight, it worked out perfectly. From Well, the I'm going to argue, I'm going to argue, Dan, it didn't work out perfectly because there are dozens of other cases that we can point to where we required that they had an active tenant before we did the benefits and that worked out to the instant and immediate benefit of the residents. I understand at the end of, end of the day with hindsight for that project, great, they finally got a tenant. That's fantastic. Uh, and, 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 I, and I'm happy that it actually worked out as opposed to not working out. My, my issue is a broader question of how many more times are we going to do that? And if it's going to be, on, and it, as it should be, a case by case basis, as long as we accept the fact that more buildings will come to us, um, historic, with a legacy, with a story, and say, I need tax benefits. Yep. Because a, ten, a tenant, and especially right now, we, again, the, look up the, consider the report we just got talking about the number of jobs and the number of companies that were impacted, that's going to have a significant impact on office space in our sub-market. I don't think anybody can necessarily would argue with that. So more companies may close and they're going to be ready to come to us for benefits, uh, whether it be to stabilize it or whether it be to Put money again. I I I, I really about, appreciate and accept the fact that they're putting a tremendous amount of money into a building that has had a trouble pass and has, you know, uh, has going to take a while to fill up. I understand. I, yes, and, this, yeah, this, this is not a question about that building, about that project. It's about a question about the, what do we want to do. So, and I would also just point out that the real economic benefit, I know everyone when, and critics of the IDA is always focused on the school tax, on the, on the real property tax. The real property tax is not the economic driver of this building. The, building, the economic driver of this building is if it is filled with tenants, there are million, tens of millions of dollars funneling through in, in salaries and employees that, which are spent into the economy. That's the real story here. And you know that empty space, having 200,000 of the 300,000 space empty is a huge economic hole in Nassau County that is never going to get filled unless this investment gets made. And what we're asking this IDA to do is to incentivize us and allow us to do that, not by writing us a big check, but just letting us be able to attract, hopefully, you know, as, as the chairman said earlier, the silver lining of this whole thing is that maybe people in New York City, businesses in New York City are going to look to move out here. They're not going to move into the building the way it is right now. You know, we, have to, we have to make this investment in order to attract those companies into a building like this. So. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying, but you know, there is a big picture here in terms of what I agree. I, 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 I and, and I'll stop. I, I absolutely agree with you about the big picture. I agree with Richie about uh, one by one. 
uh, again, my, my concern is the pattern we're about to set and understanding that in this environment, this is something many, many other builders, um, me from a professional standpoint, I'm already talking to around the country, tons of people who are facing the same exact problem. So uh, that, that's my concern. So I, I, I'm- Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate it, Tim. Uh, are there any bo other board members who wanna comment a question about this? Uh, if I'm on, right? So- Yes. Tim, I got you back always, but I just think that the way uh, times have changed, we're in a pandemic right now. I think maybe we should all sit down together as a team and talk about the future of, of what you feel and what we all feel. Because what's going to happen right now is we have to do something to help Nassau. We're in a hole and companies are going to leave, whether they get a, a tax break with us that are coming in or not. So our philosophy has to be our philosophy. And I'd like to work with you and see what we do. And we'll get the board together when we're on the same page. But right now, to me, I see it in small business. This is big business. Nassau County's in a hole. We got to try to help them back. I mean, I don't know what we can do, but. but I, I, John, you're right. You're, you're right in every single way. My concern is from a sub market for the space. So there was a report uh, I read about the CMBS. Uh, which is the office space lending world and how drastically hurt they're about to, they're bracing themselves to become. Right. And so if that's true, if we believe that the office space is going to hurt, how many more companies in Nassau County can we actually help in this fashion? And when I say this fashion, meaning they don't have a tenant and they're hoping for the best. Everybody's hoping for the best. You're, every, every company, small, big, large, developer, investor, everybody's going to hope for the best. Our responsibility is how to best use today's taxpayers' benefits that we're empowered to give away for today. And, and part of today is hoping for the best for tomorrow. So I agree with you, and I think we, should, we do need to sit down and talk about it. And again, I, I, I regret that it's focused on this property, but this is the conversation before us. And I, I just feel we need to, we, pr we probably should have had the conversation again before now. Are we prepared both in general to do these types of transactions? And then separately, based on the environment we're in, if we see 30 more of these in the next several months, years, are we prepared to do them too, one by one, evaluating each one independently, because it's going to it's going to happen. And but I, but I, I absolutely agree with you on everything. Okay, uh, look, I, I hear what you're saying. I think this project is important, uh, especially because, you know, we're hoping to get um, some businesses from New York City into Nassau County. They're gonna need space, premier space. This building is not attractive currently, and I'd love to get uh, them into this building. So I hear you. I think we can have further discussions about it, but uh, I, I think this is a good candidate uh, for us to help so that hopefully we can bring in more tenants and attract uh, and, and expand the tax base here. Uh, are there any other board members that like to address this at this time? Okay, uh, is anyone from the public uh, want to address the One Old Country Road project before us? No, Chairman. Okay, um, so we'll take a vote. Is there a motion to approve uh, this resolution for uh, DBD Realty One Old Country Road? I'll make a motion, Amy Flores. Okay, Amy, I'll second it. Uh, we'll take a voice vote. Uh, Richard Kessel, I vote aye. Amy Flores? Amy Flores, I vote aye. John Kamadis? Aye. Uh, Chris Fusco? Aye. Tim William? No. All right, now just uh, at courtesy, is Anthony on? 
Okay, so it passes four to one. Thank you. And we appreciate uh, the discussion. Always good to have a discussion and a healthy discussion. Yes, thank um, you, thank you. Uh, and, and by the way, we would just so everyone for the record knows that we did we approved three resolutions here: the CEQA, the pilot deviation, and the, the approving resolution. So that's important to know. Thank you all. Next is LEG acquisitions and Home Depot uh, for the uh, Hicksville project. Um, I don't know, is Garrett on or uh, representatives of Home Depot that uh, want to make a brief presentation again for the public's benefit? I'm Mr. here, Paul. Mr. Chairman. Huh? I'm here, hey. Mr. Chairman. Garrett Good. Gray. Yeah, Garrett, I see you. Just to make, make it clear to the public that's watching um, that this was presented to the board at our last meeting and there was a public hearing on it uh, the other day. I should have mentioned, and I apologize, on One Old Country Road that uh, I did reach out personally to both uh, Rich Nicolello, my good friend, uh, the county legislator representing uh, the, uh, the district where One Old Country Road is located, and as well uh, to uh, uh, town supervisor Judy Bosworth in the town of North Hempstead, left them messages about the project and the hearing date. So I, I, and I apologize for not saying that sooner. Now we can go on to Home Depot. Garrett? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as in a threshold matter, I wanna thank the board, uh, your entire staff and team. Uh, there has been fantastic communication, very responsive, it's very helpful. And it really brought us here today in a streamlined fashion. And I just wanted to extend my thanks and the thanks of LEG and Home Depot. Uh, with me this evening are Joel Bergstein, uh, the president of LEG Acquisition, uh, Bob Schenkel, the senior director of development of LEG Acquisition, and Jacob Williams, the director of industrial real estate for Home Depot. Uh, as the board's aware, uh, this project is located at 344 Duffy Avenue in Hicksville, uh, on the northeast corner of Duffy Avenue and Charlotte Street. Uh, it involves the construction by LEG of a 195,610 square foot one story building consisting of 181,918 square feet of warehouse and 13,692 square feet of office, 100% of which will be occupied by Home Depot. Uh, the building is being built uh, using green sustainable building practices uh, with a minimal impact on the environment, a neg deck was issued. This is uh, Home Depot's first distribution center on Long Island, so it's very exciting. Uh, they chose Nassau County as opposed to other locations they considered, uh, including Queens, Brooklyn, Westchester, and other New York counties. Uh, basically, as you know, home, uh, Nassau County is not the least expensive place to uh, do business, but with the assistance of the IDA, uh, it made it uh, much more feasible. Uh, we met with the local civic associations. Uh, we have their full support and we're happy to be making this uh, significant investment in Nassau County. Uh, if the board has any questions, we are all happy to answer them. All right, thank you, Garrett. A uh, couple of points. First of all, I, I won't forget this at the beginning that uh, mm -hmm. uh, we did have a hearing the other day. I did reach out to the county legislator who represents this area, Laura Schaefer, spoke with her and as well spoke to Brian Nevin, who works with Supervisor Joe Saladino and let them know about the project and the hearing. So that's important to do. Um, I, I also wanna just indicate personally that uh, I'm excited about this project. Uh, first of all, you have a, an internationally known uh, company looking to uh, set up operations in, in Nassau County. And that's exciting. What's really exciting though, is that Nassau County is looking at a new industry that we can attract here. And that is a distribution and or what's commonly called a last mile facility. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Home Depot uh, uh, agreeing to come here it, and I, from what I understand, Garrett, you mentioned this in our meeting, they were looking at 
other locations um, in other parts of the country, particularly the East Coast, and yes. it shows Nassau County. That means that we're attracting these kind of businesses. And you combine that with Amazon, which is currently uh, looking at two uh, facilities of its kind, one very large one at the old Zero Wire site. We've had some initial discussions about them, uh, with them, and one in uh, Westbury. And uh, these bring a, a, a number of jobs, both in-house and uh, a carrier delivery jobs, hundreds of them. And so this could be a new industry for Nassau County to expand on uh, because we're in a great location. Uh, we've got a low crime rate. Um, you know, Long Island is a big, has a big hunger for Home Depot um, and uh, other ki uh, kinds of companies of a similar nature. We're located perfectly. We're close enough uh, to the city, but we're not far enough away that it, it doesn't make economic sense. So this is, I think this is the start of a beautiful new relationship with Home Depot, Amazon, and other companies that are looking to locate um, in Nassau County. And I say, come, we want you, we want your jobs. And certainly again, with uh, COVID uh, 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 upon us, um, and, and the more jobs we can create here, uh, not only construction jobs, but also uh, in well, full-time and part-time workers, the better uh, off we're going to be. So I'm very excited about that and, and welcome it. Andrew, I'd like you to describe the project, then we'll ask for any questions from the board and then the public. Sure, in front of the board, there are three resolutions, a secret resolution, a pilot deviation resolution, and an approving resolution. The financial assistance uh, up for approval contemplate sales and use tax exemption in the amount of $172,500. Uh, there is no mortgage recording tax exemption here. And this is a 15 year pilot that uh, has two components. It has a base pilot component that takes the existing land taxes, uh, freezes them at their current level for the first five years, and then increases them with inflation 1.81% compounded. And it has an improvement pilot that takes the assessed value of the improvements and phases them in over the duration of the 15 year pilot and uh, increases uh, the payments by the inflation rate after the fifth year by 1.81% uh, compounded. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, are there any questions uh, uh, or comments from any of the board members? Andrew, I, I have a, just a quick question. Maybe it doesn't relate just to this project, but when we have the pilot escalation, the 1.81%, uh, if that were to change, would that apply to the pilots that we've already approved? Uh, that 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 would not. So it is an escalator that uh, relates to uh, individual pilots. Uh, the agency typically uses, generally, I would say, not in all instances, but generally uses the inflation rate in the applicable year when the pilot is approved. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, before uh, I get to public comment, I, I should have said this at the beginning, that if, if you don't want to make a, an oral public comment, you can submit written comments, or I guess we call them email comments, to info at nasaida.org. Um, and that's, that's important to know uh, for future hearings as we go forward. Obviously, we're uh, uh, at the end of the process here. But as an example with London Jewelers, um, you know, there will be a hearing, but people don't have to attend it in person. They can always uh, email uh, their comments 
to uh, NASA, info at nassauida.org. Um, I do want to also remind if there's anyone that does wish to address the board, they have uh, three minutes to make a comment uh, and we, we will stick to that. With that, uh, Catherine, is there anyone who wishes to comment on the Home Depot project? Uh, yes, Chairman, we have a Mr. Kevin McKenna who raised his hand. Mr. McKenna, are uh, you? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes hi, Kevin, Kevin McKenna. I represent a community group called Save Our Town of Oyster Bay. And um, before I ask my question, um, I'm curious to know if, for the record, if uh, legislator uh, Laura Schaefer and if anybody from the town of Oyster Bay is on the call, I don't know if it's appropriate that I ask that question. Well, we're not going to disclose that. If they want to, they're welcome to do that, Kevin. I understand. If, if all right, well, um, but the reason I, I, I say that is sure. my, my, com my comment and, and, and also question is, um, I'm sure that you're aware that, uh, by the way, I, I think this is a great, it's a great project, a great company. But my question is, how are the trucks going to get to the building there is there are made there are many many other projects that are in the works in Hicksville which I'm sure that you're aware of and even before those projects come about there is a, a major major problem on 106 107 and the 112 Parkway does not accommodate commercial vehicles which is right next to the building so did I, did I hear someone a little while ago say that there is going to be a secret process? There's a, there was already a, a secret process done with the town, uh, Kevin. Oh, there um, was, because I don't, I, don't, I don't recall, I do not recall any hearing that took place as part of that secret process. Oh, absolutely. There were hearings before the planning board of the town of Oyster Bay as well as the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. There were two- Okay, well, the, zone, the Zoning Appeals is for, is for variances, but all right, I'll, I'll check that, maybe I missed it, but um, could the applicant explain uh, how the trucks are gonna get to the building? Joel, do you wanna uh, explain? Joel Bergstein, are you muted? Okay, I'll, I would imagine uh, truck traffic would take place on the LIE. Uh, they would travel south down 106, 107 and uh, make the turn onto Duffy Avenue, make the right turn and go down uh, Duffy where they would uh, enter the building. Uh, that, that's what I thought you were going to say. And, um... I would hope that the uh, that the IDA board has reviewed and has considered any any traffic study that we're still waiting on. We are still waiting on a traffic study from New York State on the 106 107 corridor in light of Seritage, in light of the downtown revitalization. So I, I hope that you take that into consideration because. It, it's a major problem, and, and um, it would be great if the applicant can come up with a, a different way to get the trucks there because you're going to gridlock Hicksville. Actually, Mr. McKenna, Mr. McKenna, you know, I know you understand uh, and can appreciate your concern about traffic. However, we did submit a full traffic study to the town of Oyster Bay, which was analyzed and reviewed, and it will not, uh, it will not. Uh, cause any significant impact on traffic in the area, including well, 106, speaking, 107. Well, this is Garrett Gray. Okay. This is Garrett Gray. Just for your information, the town of Oyster Bay has no expertise right now in-house in traffic studies. They don't even have a commissioner right now of environmental resources, but um, thank you very much. I'll leave it at that. Um, thanks thank for you. answering my question. Thank you, Kevin. And Maybe we can, uh, uh, Garrett, if you could get a copy of the traffic study uh, over to Kevin, that would be appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, 
Catherine, do we have anyone else that wants to speak on this? Yes, Chairman, we have James McCaffrey. Okay, Mr. McCaffrey. <laughs> I uh, would just like to say that the town of Oyster Bay is uh, listening to the meeting. I'm representing the town of Oyster Bay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else wish to speak on this uh, uh, Home Depot resolution? No, Chairman, there is no one else in the queue. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, James and Kevin, for participating. Um, so we have a, a, a three resolutions. We can take them together. CEQA, pilot deviation, and approving resolutions. Um, do I hear a motion to adopt those three resolutions together? Tim Williams. Tim Williams moves. Is there a second? Chris Fusco, second. Chris Fusco, second. Um, all those in, well, I guess we'll do a roll call vote. Richard Kessel. I vote aye. Amy Flores. Amy Flores, I vote aye. Tim Williams. Yes. John Kamatis. Aye. Chris Fusco. Aye. Okay, the resolution carries. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Home Depot. We're Thank you. Forward to uh, that operation commencing soon. You bet. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Chairman. And thanks again for all your help. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have one more approval resolution than several other pieces of business that should move quickly. I, I know it's uh, almost 840. It's uh, been a, a, a long night and I apologize for that. We'll try to move through this. Uh, uh, this is uh, 26 Sunset, which is a hotel at Millerage Inn. Uh, I asked um, the representative of 26 Sunset, I think it's Bill Cornaccio, uh, if he and his clients, if they're there, to make a brief presentation. I do want to point out that we, uh, that we did approve this preliminarily twice, if I remember correctly, uh, because there's been a lot of changes with the town of Oyster Bay. Uh, I did reach out to uh, Arnie Drucker, my good friend, the county legislator who represents um, the area, um, and uh, as well as to Brian Nevin, uh, who represents Joe Saladino, let them know about the hearing and the project, as is our process uh, uh, always. So uh, with that, uh, uh, it, the representatives of 26 Sunset, they want to make a brief presentation. Now's the time. Bill, your microphone is off. Here we go. I'm on now, correct, uh, Andrew? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman, and thanks again for the uh, accommodation. Uh, my name is Bill Cornaccio. I'm with uh, Rifkin Radler, and uh, I have uh, with me on the call uh, Brian Danzi, a representative of the uh, developer. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a wonderful segue to your remarks a little bit earlier. Uh, what we propose to put on this vacant piece of uh, real estate uh, in Jericho on Route 107 is a Marriott residence in hotel, which caters principally to the traveler. Uh, so if God willing, Amazon and Home Depot come to Long Island, uh, the executives and others uh, doing business with those two uh, great companies. We'll have a uh, wonderful upscale hotel uh, to accommodate them. And what is this hotel? It's a 93 room hotel. It's going to bear the Marriott Residence Inn brand. It's in the Jericho Commons Shopping Center on the east side of North Broadway, just north of the uh, LIE. Um, there will be uh, of the 93 units, 63 studios, 24 one bedroom, and uh, six uh, two bedroom suites. Uh, uh, to help support uh, the local businesses in the, uh, in the adjoining shopping center, there's not gonna be a restaurant there. We want the patrons to, I should say, we want the hotel guests to patronize the restaurants in the immediate area. So we, we uh, 
we will not have a full service restaurant there. The whole, the goal of this particular project is to support uh, the businesses in the uh, uh, nearby area. Uh, as we uh, mentioned in the past, uh, this shovel ready project uh, will uh, use union labor. Uh, we expect that we will employ uh, approximately 100 uh, construction workers uh, in various trades. Uh, and uh, we're going to uh, create uh, 33 uh, full-time uh, workers and five five-time, uh, uh, I'm sorry, five part-time jobs. Uh, our positions will range from uh, management professionals to skilled and unskilled uh, uh, staff. Uh, there's, uh, questions have been raised about the pilot payments and the assistance associated with the pilot payments. As I've emphasized in the past, this is vacant land and uh, the pilot will actually, actually generate more revenue uh, for the county, the school district, and the town uh, than is presently uh, uh, paid with respect to the real estate taxes on the uh, vacant land. Uh, just to, to uh, uh, continue that theme, in addition to the real estate taxes, we expect uh, that the hotel will generate sales taxes on an annual basis of approximately $150,000 and hotel occup occupancy taxes of approximately 100,000. Again, that's on a uh, annual basis. So we really think this uh, uh, project is of uh, great benefit to the community. Uh, I am uh, authorized to uh, report that the school district has also uh, in writing acknowledged the fact that this uh, project is of benefit uh, to the community. Um, so we, um, uh, look forward uh, to building it. As I say, it's shovel ready. And uh, uh, we're grateful for your uh, consideration. I should add, um, because of some changes in the project, including a reduction in root count and a commitment to engage union labor, union labor in the absence of assistance from the agency, this project uh, would only be a gleam in someone's eyes. It, it, it absolutely needs this assistance in order to uh, uh, be completed and to operate successfully. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Andrew, do you want to describe the benefit package? Certainly, there are, there are three resolutions in front of the board, a secret resolution, a pilot deviation resolution, and an approving resolution. Uh, these resolutions collectively approve uh, financial assistance consisting of mortgage recording tax exemption in the amount of $120,000, sales and use tax exemption in the amount up to $925,000, and a 20-year pilot that consists of a base taxes pilot as well as an improvement pilot. Uh, the base taxes are increased with the inflation rate uh, after the after the third fiscal year and the improvement pilot uh, is uh, basically a straight line phase in over the 20 years with 5% incremental increases in each year and applied to that phase in is also the 1.81 inflation rate escalator compounded. Thank you, uh, Andrew, uh, I appreciate it. I, 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 I neglected to say that I have uh, reached out on uh, all of these projects to uh, Matt Arasich of the building trades, as has Chris Fusco and Anthony Simon and Chris, and I know Anthony's not here now, he was before, I wanna thank you and uh, Anthony, for your help in working with the unions. Um, I don't want to speak for Matt Arasich, but I, I, you know, when we do have a meeting, and I, you know, the use of union labor, especially now, is critically important. And uh, I do, uh, as a routine matter, reach out to Matt and sometimes other union leaders on all of these projects. And I, I'm sorry I neglected to say that uh, before. 
uh, so I appreciate it. Um, are there any questions first by board members or comments about 26 Sunset Milleridge Hotel? Okay, so I see none. Uh, Catherine, who do we have that uh, want to uh, address the board again, just to repeat, uh, e each uh, person has three minutes to speak at this time. Uh, at this time, we have legislator Arnie Drucker. Okay, Arnie, how are you? Thank you very much, Chairman Richie Kessel. I appreciate the opportunity to speak before the board. Thank the, I kind of thank all the board members and the executive officers. Um, you know, as, as I indicated on the meeting on Monday, uh, I just received the information, including the, the Camoyne uh, 310 report on Monday. So I did have some questions. Uh, you did answer some of them, but I do have some follow-up questions, and I hope I will have an opportunity to ask them. Would that be okay? Sure. Uh, so the, I guess the questions will be directed to both uh, Mr. Cornaccio and to the board too. The pro uh, this proposed pilot exceeds or deviates from the IDA's uniform tax exemption policy, the norm being 10 years. And the answer that was given to me is that a 20 year pilot is necessary to induce the developer to undertake the project. Can someone really give me a more detailed answer than that? Mr. Cornaccio, perhaps you can answer that. Well, uh, I sure can. I, I can tell you that uh, this is not the uh, first 20-year pilot I have done uh, with the uh, Nassau County uh, uh, Industrial Development Agency. Uh, I can also point out uh, that, as I have in the past and as I did in my presentation, uh, the pilot generates greater revenue uh, for the municipal authorities uh, than uh, the vacant land taxes uh, that are now in place. Uh, also, uh, as I mentioned to you on Monday, we have uh, tremendous challenges associated with the hotel uh, industry in general. Uh, this project was originally conceived as a 127 room uh, project that was reduced for a variety of for a variety of reasons to 93 rooms. Uh, it was not conceived initially uh, as a uh, fully union project, a uh, union labor project, it is now. And furthermore, the lease negotiated uh, uh, with the owner of the fee, the real estate, uh, uh, has been in place and um, is fixed. Um, so though we have a, a, a number of fixed costs associated with this project during the term of the lease. And again, it's a financial viability uh, depends on uh, a pilot of, uh, of the length that's been proposed. I think Andrew can probably speak to the fact that other hotel projects, uh, uh, perhaps not in your district uh, legislator, uh, uh, Drucker, but in in the Nassau Cap, uh, County region, have also had the benefit of twenty year pilots. Is that not correct, Andrew? Yeah, Andrew that is. I, I think you're uh, equipped to answer our, uh, Legislator Drucker question about the typical nature of a pilot. Sure. Uh, so, so indeed, the Nassau County IDA has a uniform tax exemption policy. Historically, this IDA, the way it's policy written, it is, it is quite narrowly drafted and virtually in all of its transactions going back many, many years, it has been deviating from its uniform tax exemption policy. Uh, one reason the agency, I think, and this is my personal thought, uh, elects to keep it this way because this uh, requires the agency to give special notice of all of its pilots to the heads of the taxing jurisdictions. If you proceed under your UTAP, no special pilot notice is required. This way, every pilot the IDA does as a deviation uh, prompts the IDA to give a notice to the affected tax jurisdictions. To go back to Mr. Cornaccio's point, the IDA has uh, in the past, uh, granted several 20-year pilots 
particularly in the case of commercial projects, including hotel projects that involved new construction. Isn't it though a little misleading though, because it's emphasized uh, tremendously throughout this application and the Camoyan report that the developer will be paying substantially higher real estate taxes throughout the term of the pilot. But the comparison in the Camoyan report shows that the tax is off of the vacant unimproved land. But let's say it takes two years until the hotel is built and open. You know, by that time after reassessment, the annual property taxes could be four times higher than what they are now. So the, the developer would be deriving a huge tax savings. Isn't that correct? Uh, I, sh I should point out that <clears throat> as uh, part of the process, beginning with the first effect year effective date of the uh, of the pilot uh, the uh, any tax protests have been with, will will be withdrawn uh, so that uh, right now the property is subject uh, to tax protest proceedings uh, so any anticipated tax increase in the vacant land property is subject to uh, review. But the chart continuously shows the comparison between the taxes without the pilot and the taxes with the pilot showing that the developer is gonna pay substantially more taxes. But it's misleading because after a couple of years, it would be assessed at far greater value than the vacant unimproved land. So that's when the, that's when the developer is gonna be deriving the biggest benefit, isn't that true? Well, I think another really important focus should be on the fact that this hotel will employ 33 full-time workers uh, of varying skills uh, and five part-time workers. So this is a job generating project. It also is a, an economic driver uh, in that community as far as the local uh, 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 I'm answering my question, Mr. Canacci. You're no, not I'm, not, my I'm, I'm, not, I'm not directly because I think I have. Let's, uh, let's uh, you know, let's move these answers quickly. Uh, I, first of all, can everyone move, move mute, please? Because I keep hearing radio interference from somewhere. So I hear that and it's hard to hear. So if people could mute, unless they're speaking, that would be helpful. I just wanted to get clarification that the, the bulk of this pilot is going to be a benefit derived by the developer after the property is, is built and open and it's assessed at far greater than vacant land. Well, Ani, I, I'll just give you one quick answer and then we can move on. But um, if, if the IDA doesn't give the pilot, then the project's not built and nothing is there. So the comparison might better be the, uh, the pilot under the, ho uh, under the hotel and uh, the vacant land. That's all that would remain there. No, I understand that, uh, uh, Chairman Kessel. That, but that, that, in fact, is usually always the case when it gets to this point. You get to the developer will now say, well, if I don't get the IDA, I can't go forward with it. I mean, I, I see that argument being made continuously. So, um, you know, the, the horse has been, been let out of the barn by now. So my concerns, I, I'll wrap it up. I don't want to keep everyone, you know, indefinitely on this. I, I, I read the report carefully. There are, I'm just concerned with the benchmarks that the developer has to meet in terms of permanent employment, the, the labor contracts, the tax payments going forward. I just need to make sure that the, uh, the agency, uh, what are you going to do? How do you monitor that? And, and you know, what, 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 are your, what does it take for you to initiate or employ any clawback powers that if you feel that they're not meeting the benchmark? That's what I'm concerned about. As, you know, as, as representative of this community and the taxpayers there, if this developer is not meeting their benchmarks, is the, is the IDA prepared to claw back what needs to be done? And how do you monitor that? And when does it take, when does it take place? Thanks, Arnie. I, I think I could uh, jump in on that. Um, uh, we do monitor every project that we approve. 
There is an annual filing that all of our uh, so-called clients or customers have to make with us. Uh, we follow up with them. And if they don't meet that uh, commitment, uh, we would claw back and have clawed back uh, on, on several projects. So we, we follow that very, very closely. We take it very, very seriously. All right, good. I mean, so, you know, I'll just wrap it up by just saying, you know, the nature of this project and the quality of life issues associated with it, they've already been considered after hearings conducted by the town of Oyster Bay and, and, and approved by them. And I appreciate the efforts made by the developer to alter the project in consideration of some of the community members directly impacted by the hotel and that they, they reduced the height of the hotel by taking off a floor and reducing the number of rooms from 127 to 93. And I appreciate the fact that all the construction jobs will be union jobs, but I just need to be assured that if this pilot is granted that, again, all of the benchmarks will be met and monitored by the agency and there must be full and complete uh, transparency and disclosure. Uh, and there'll be no hesitancy by the agency to employ its clawback power should it become necessary. You can be assured of that, Arnie. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate the opportunity, Chairman Kessel. Thank you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you Likewise. involved, and we appreciate your concern and your input very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Catherine, is there anyone else that wishes to address the board? No, Chairman, none at this time. Okay. So we have three resolutions um, for this project, the CEQA resolution, pilot deviation, and approving resolution. Um, so do I hear a motion to adopt those three resolutions? Tim Williams. Tim Williams says yes. He, he moves it. Is there a second? This must go on the second. Chris, thank you for your second. Um, all those in, well, I'll do a roll call vote, sorry. Richard Kessel. I vote aye. Uh, Amy Flores? Amy Flores, aye. Okay. Chris Fusco? Aye. Tim Williams? Aye. John Kamatis? Aye. Okay, the resolutions carry. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, thank you very, very much for your uh, consideration. This has been a long project, uh, long in conception and long in fruition. Uh, and we look very, very forward to putting shovels in the ground and, and putting uh, Long Islanders to work. Thank you, Bill. We appreciate it. Next, um, we have a general public comment period. Um, is there anyone that wishes to address the IDA board on anything? Catherine? I'm just checking. Uh, we do have a hand raise from uh, Kevin McKenna again. Okay. So, Mr. McKenna, you have three minutes. We're glad to hear you. Yes, hi. Thank you very much. Um, again, Kevin McKenna. I represent the community group Save Our Town Oyster Bay. Um, could you could you explain? Um, uh, by the way, uh, I'm extremely impressed with all the members of the board. Um, could you explain when your term? Do you have a term? And a a how did you get on the board, were you voted on or were you nominated? And when do your terms expire? You know, that's a good question. I think I know the answer. Um, we uh, were nominated, uh, all of us, by the county executive, uh, Laura Curran. We then had to uh, appear before the county legislature and uh, they confirmed all of our appointments. Uh, I don't think we have terms we serve at the pleasure of the county executive. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, um, Catherine, is anyone else that wishes to make a public comment? I'm just checking the queue and it appears no chairman, no one at this time. Okay, uh, so let me go through these other things. Uh, the minutes, uh, approval of our May 28th, 2020 minutes. First, do I have a motion uh, to approve those minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. Chris second. Fusco moves it. I'll second it. Are there any changes or additions um, or comments on the uh, May 28th minutes? Hearing none, I think we can do a voice vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we have several other resolutions that I can move through pretty quickly. We have a procurement resolution regarding fresh works. I'll ask Harry if he would just describe that. I think he did mention it in his report, but if Harry could describe it. Yes, thank you. Freshworks is the previously mentioned customer relationship management system. Generally, this would just be a monthly operating expense. However, we are receiving a 20% discount if we take a one-year license for all seven members of the staff. And it just is above, right above the procurement policy threshold of 3000 at a cost of approximately $3,300. Thank you, Harry. Are there any questions on the part of the board? Hearing none, is there any questions from the public? No, Chairman, not at this time. Hearing none, um, is there a, a motion to adopt? I'll make a motion, Amy Flores. Amy Flores, thank you. Is there a second? Chris Fosco on the second. Chris, thank you. I think we could do a voice vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? All right, second, Discover Long Island's Band Wango Initiative uh, Resolution. Uh, Catherine, are you gonna speak to that or Harry? I will, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, we were presented Band Wango by Discover Long Island. We are partnering with the Suffolk County IDA. Band Wango is an app-based destination marketing tool um, where we can promote downtown businesses in our instance, we are promoting Farmingdale, Great Neck, and Rockville Center. Um, and it's, uh, it's different type of couponing, um, different type of marketing for those businesses within those downtowns. Uh, it's a cost of approximately $7,000 to the agency um, being shared equally uh, between ourselves and the Suffolk IDA in partnership with Discover Long Island. Thank you, uh, Harry. Are there any questions on the part of the board? A quick question: Why, why just the three? Out of, out of... They're limited to six initially, based on the the license that we're taking. So yeah. Suffolk is promoting three towns; we're promoting three. And how do we pick those three? Uh, we did it in conjunction with the administration, uh, with their team as well, to see where we could get the best uh, presence. Okay, I mean, aren't we? Wouldn't, wouldn't all the other ones get pissed off at us for? They, they may, but we want to prove the platform first. So we're going to prove it here as a pilot. And then if it can be expanded, we will expand. And that we at least give the municipalities an opportunity to, the, you know, submit something so they could be picked or we just pick? We, we picked it after our own analysis. Ah, okay. But Tim, I, I do think you bring up a, a, a an important point. That is, this is a pilot, and I I, I'm, I hope that it works. So we're in a position to do this for a number of other villages in the county. I, I I'm sure, but I hope it works too. It sounds like something very interesting. I'm just again, based on where we're sitting today, um, I'm sure 15 other municipalities would have wanted their name there, or at least had the opportunity to try to put their name there as part of the pilot. How we pick, you know, just these three and all three are worthy, great. I live next door to Rockville Center, so no objection, but uh, I, I, my issue is not for the guys that got picked, it's for the guys who didn't even know they that they were not in the running. No doubt, every downtown is worthy and it deserves the, uh, the presence. Any other questions on the part of the board? Seeing none, I think we could do a voice vote. Oh, first, do, do I have a motion to adopt the resolution? I'll make a motion, Amy Flores. Amy Flores, Richard Kessel, I'll second it. Uh, we can do a voice vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion carries. Now we have three film festivals um, Harry, I think we can describe uh, all of them, Long Beach, uh, Gold Coast, 
and uh, Life Film Expo resolution. So if you could uh, explain them and then we can uh, vote on them. Certainly, as you may recall, we had a prior discussion in a prior board meeting recently, uh, specific to Gold Coast. Um, this time we are presenting all three of the film festivals that we have historically uh, supported. We are presenting them at the same level of participation. This is really coming down to a matter of timing. Uh, you see, we noted the timing for each of the festivals. Um, we've also put in anticipated payment dates. We're sitting here on July 7th. We have a meeting scheduled for the end of this month, which based on agenda, uh, we may or may not have. And traditionally we have worked to not hold a meeting in August unless otherwise necessary, which means we may not have another meeting until the end of September, potentially. So what we're seeking is approval to at the right times at the anticipated payment dates, working in conjunction with these festivals, understanding their current programming based on the COVID pandemic, uh, seeking your approval at those points in time to make payments in support of the festivals. Thank you, uh, Harry. Are there any questions on the part of the board? Mr. Chairman, if I could just add that, that the huh. sponsorships are to be used specifically for the purposes described in the slide, and if they're not used, uh, the monies are not used for those purposes. They, under the agreements that are made for each festival, the money is to be returned. So there is a, a, um, a recapture remedy, so to speak, um, if the monies are not used for the those specific uses. Thank uh, you, Tom. Uh, just one question. Have er each and every one confirmed they're actually having them? Yes, we've had discussions with each of them uh, and they have confirmed to us they're continuing with their programming. Dates and type of programming are being adjusted accordingly. Some some programs may move to virtual, but still in person as well. So out of curiosity, what does happen? And God forbid it does, but we go into some sort of a, um, a reversal pandemic issue where we go backwards in opening um is it just and they're they're not op, they're not able to perform the way they intend it is there uh, even though they intend to use the money um for what's described here but you know there's an order to shut down no gatherings of 10 or more people or whatever the case might be is there have we contemplated that well the one contemplation is as tom glasscock just described but the second is this is one of the reasons we are at seeking approval for payment time frames that are down the road. So uh, Long Island International Film Expo, for example, we wouldn't pay until September um, and Gold Coast Arts until October. So at that point, we'll be able to assess the situation. And, you know, and each festival would be would be receiving the money with a specific understanding that, that those monies are to be used for that festival. It's not to go into their operating budget. It's not to go for next year's contingency fund, anything of that nature. And also with the express understanding that if it's not used for that festival, they are to return the ones. So if they get canceled by executive order by the governor, then they have to return all the money. If they don't have the festival technically or pursuant to the terms of the agreement, the monies would be, uh, would be or are to be returned. Okay, that's good. Can I just ask a question? Even though these are up here, have we heard about the Oyster Fest at all? It, that is, that? my understanding is Oyster Fest is not, um, what will not be happening this year. Okay. Um, similarly, the Huntington, um, Huntington's uh, Long Island uh, Festival isn't happening as well. That, that I know that decision was made today by the Huntington Chamber. So. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, any further questions? All right, I think we could take all these together we would be voting a resolution to approve the expenditures for the Long Beach, Gold Coast, and uh, Long Island International Film Festival, all of them, and the Long Island uh, Festival as well, the three of them. Do I hear a motion to approve those three resolutions? Tim Williams. Tim, thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second, Amy Flores. Amy Flores. All right, I think we could do a voice vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, we now have a report from our chief financial officer, Ann Lamort. 
Thank you, Chairman Kessel. May I please direct the board members to go to the drop box uh, for the IDA CFO report and the file name is June 2020. As uh, Harry, our CEO has already stated, we had one closing to date. It was the TMB Capri Motel and that was in May. We are definitely lagging in closing fee income. However, we have reached out to council and uh, they have provided us with an updated closing and revenue um, schedule. And we have a number of projects that are estimated to close within the next few months. If we can move down to the expense section, uh, we are actually under our, our budgeted amounts in expenses. I just wanted to take you through the big numbers um, and tell you what's included in them. Um, in professional fees, we have the report, the HR, HR and A report for the COVID-19 economic recovery plan. Those expenses are in that line. The um, big thing in the administrative fee is the temporary help for the uh, interim CFO. That was approximately 58% of that line is for that item. And if we look at the economic development and marketing, there is um, the expense for the small corporate support for small business campaign. And we also have the um, branding for the IDA and the website for the new website expenses um, that are not capitalized. They will, they're showing that line. We are um, capitalizing the expense for the web and the branding over a five year period after the completion of both the branding and the website. Um, if you go down to the cash position, um, it's on the bottom on the right and it's going down a bit, but once we have our revenue streams coming in from the closing, we should be fine. Do any, anyone have any questions? All right. Uh, thank you, Ann. Hearing none. Appreciate it. Before thank we you. adjourn, what's that? Thank you. Okay. Before we adjourn, uh, if Harry alluded to it, um, because of obviously the changing uh, circumstances, um, our regularly scheduled uh, July meeting is two weeks from tonight, July 23rd. Um, I'd ask the board to keep it on your schedule for the next few days. Um, we will decide um, early to middle of next week whether that meeting will take place or not. My guess is that it won't. Um, there are several major uh, uh, projects that may come to us, which might necessitate um, a special meeting over the summer, uh, potentially later in the month or early in August. We will be in touch with you but uh, I don't want to officially cancel uh, a, a neck, uh, the a 23rd meeting, which is really two weeks from tonight, um, um, pending several things that are going on out there. Uh, we, obviously, we respect everyone's schedule. We understand, you know, August is a difficult month, um, but uh, we will let uh, everyone on the board and the public know about the July 23rd meeting sometime next week uh, and plan accordingly. Is there any other business to come before the board? Hearing none, um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Tim, Tim Williams. Tim Williams moves it. Is there a second? Chris Foss, go on the second. Great, thank you. A voice vote, all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Um, thank you. This meeting is adjourned and uh, we'll be in touch with you next week about uh, the next meeting. Thank you. Good night all. Good night.
Thanks, Chris. Good night. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Good night.